Turn to John Palmarosi from MLB Network. Uh, he has been kind enough to join us now for today's Comcast Business What to Watch. Uh, let's begin with the Angels, John Paul. They made a trade overnight with the White Sox. I guess they're buying. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I guess Shohei Otani is going nowhere because here come Lucas Giolito and Reynaldo Lopez from the Chicago White Sox. A really attention-grabbing move by the Angels last night that affirmed that Shohei Otani is going nowhere. And after winning seven of nine, the Angels believe they are in this AL wildcard race and maybe even in the American League West race as well, Mickey. When you think about what Giolito can bring in, he was one of the prizes on the rental starting pitching market. Lopez can be a bit of a swing man for you. So the Angels believe, Mickey, that the way they're playing right now, they expect Mike Trout to come back at some point in time in the month of August. And the natural follow-up, what does this mean for their chances to keep Otani yeah. long-term? And Mickey, what I would tell you is the more games they win, the more compelling of a team they are to play for, the better their chances to sign Shohei long-term. At the end of the day, Mickey, he wants to win. And this trade last night gives the Angels a better chance to do so. Well, we had heard some rumors that he may be wanting to move on from Los Angeles. Is it just contract posturing being played out in the media? I don't think so, Mickey. I think he does just want to win. Of course, yep. he has yet to play an MLB postseason game when whatever the contractual numbers end up being, it's going to be Mickey York kind of money for Shohei <laughs> in the offseason, Mickey. Mickey York kind and of I, money I, for Shohei. So, so basically, yeah. we know what the ante is going to be, Mick, and it's just a question of which teams are really serious about offering it. Uh, I, I don't think they could sign him for John Palmarosi and Mickey York <laughs> money combined, so they're going to have some work to do out there if they want to keep Otani long-term. Uh, as far as the Tigers, like Michael Lorenzo on the mound today, one of the names we're hearing mentioned in trade rumors, what's likely to happen with the Tigers here? At the I, I do think Michael Lorenzo is now, especially after Giolito has moved on to the Angels, one of the very top starting pitchers on the trade market, certainly Erod as well. But Lorenzen, Mickey, is a clearer case. He is a rental starting pitcher. His contract expires. We know, of course, Rodriguez has the opt-out. And I'll tell you this, Mickey, about six or seven scouts in that press area right now wanting to watch Michael Lorenzen pitch. And to your point, it's going to be a good test. And Natalie did a great interview with Michael a little bit earlier today about Lorenzen understanding where the trade deadline is and also facing his former teammates. Typically, the more familiarity you have, it's advantage to the offense. So if Michael can go out there today and throw a gem against a tough lineup that knows him well, it's only going to boost his trade value. I think teams like the Orioles, maybe even the Rangers as well. The Rays are involved in a lot of different starting pitching conversations too. A lot of healthy interest right now, Michael Lorenzen. Are the Tigers officially in the seller's pool? I think so, Mickey. Yeah. Just, just based on where they're at right now in the standings, if it's the right deal for a rental. I, I'm not so sure that necessarily Foley is a clear trade candidate because, of course, there are, are more years of control on Foley and some of the other bullpen pieces there and even some of the position players. But I, I do think when you've got a, a rental starting pitcher in Lorenzen who really has boosted his value, and who knows, the Tigers could have an approach where they potentially move Lorenzen next week and then sign him back during the offseason. Right, the Angels and White Sox have sort of kicked everything off. Now the dominoes start to fall overall. Who do you expect to be the most active buyers and sellers at the deadline? Well, in the seller conversation, Mickey, I do think the White Sox have some more work to do. And they have Lance Lynn to potentially move, Tim Anderson, especially if Tim becomes a second baseman at the deadline. Maybe a team like the Brewers, the Mariners, the Giants. And I'm going to look very carefully at the Chicago Cubs as a potential fit, of course, that they've been playing the White Sox this week. And I mentioned Lynn and Anderson. But the Cubs are interesting to me, Mickey, because they might move Marcus Stroman in the same conversation as a, as a rental starting pitcher like Lorenzen, but then keep Cody Bellinger. Bellinger, a former National League MVP, has really found a home, it seems to me, on the north side of Chicago. John Palmarosi, we know this. He'll be a very busy man over the next few days. <laughs> To keep up on everything, just follow him. He is everywhere. It, He's not hard thank to find. Thank you so much. All thank right, you. Thank I you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it.